sometimes revenge is your friend okay <laughs> this is and not and not to be no 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 not to be vengeful don't be vengeful towards the person okay, okay. but revenge as in level yourself up like what? you're gonna Wait, be so like, who, who was that right. why, why did why was that no literally that? you're like, gonna be so busy living your best life and creating yeah. the life that you want for yourself yeah. that you are going to forget that that person broke your heart you're hi everyone i'm melanie Eke, and i'm colby ray and you are watching your favorite show life lessons on ncrf tv today we're venturing into the world of love we're doing it we're doing it we're talking about heartbreak. We've all experienced it, but we're gonna explore it from hopefully some angles that you haven't seen before. We're gonna talk about heartbreak and romantic relationships, friendships, and then maybe even other relationships and figure out how we learn from these experiences to become healthier people. Hopefully some of us learn from these experiences to become healthier people. So we have some great guests to talk about this topic with. Yes, today we are with Roxanne Ortega. She is a food and beverage manager for Wolfgang Puck Catering. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, and we also have Javier Gonzalez who is a youth educator, which is so awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Great. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you guys for being here. This is a fun, but also like not fun topic, if that makes sense. <laughs> so um, we're just happy that you guys are here with us. And Melanie is going to start us off with the, all the happenings yeah. in today's discussion. Yeah. <clears throat> so I know that when we first think about heartbreak, our mind automatically goes to romantic relationships, right? So let's just go ahead and get it out the way. And let's talk about heartbreak and romantic relationships, but we want to talk about the lessons that you've learned because this is life lessons. So hopefully we've learned a few things and hadn't had to learn the same lesson too many times, although some of us do. So let's get into it. What types of things have you learned about yourselves or other people through experiencing heartbreak and romantic relationships? Um, initially, when thinking of heartbreak, my mind doesn't really go to romantic relationships. Oh. I think of uh, losing like a loved one, um, mm -hmm. something I don't really have control over. And um, that to me is heartbreak. But in, in relationships, um, you, you sometimes feel like the world's gonna end, you know, because you're in that moment. Um, but I've definitely had some experiences with heartbreak in relationships and, um, I, I know I'm not going to make that mistake again <laughs> or I hope not to, you know, you don't want to do that twice. Yeah. yeah. You learn, have you, have you learned anything about yourself? Have you oh, learned yeah. anything about human nature? Standards. <laughs> to have standards. Let's talk about it. <laughs> know, know your worth, you know, yes. um, you realize uh, you don't like the way someone is treating you or the way they're talking to you, um, or maybe even the way that uh, they portray you uh, to be. And uh, sometimes that's not fair. And um, I don't know. I just I feel like I, I have been in a, a toxic relationship before to where um, uh, I, I didn't see it at the moment, but, I mean, everyone mm, around nobody me Nobody does. Yeah. <laughs> they never do. Everyone around me was uh, noticing that it was toxic, that I wasn't happy. I'm always crying, or they can hear that I'm yelling mm. on the phone. What type of relationship is that? I don't know what I wanted from it. I know that I did have genuine love um, in that relationship. There was definitely um, passion behind that, but I don't know if it was for the wrong reasons, because this was years ago, and, I mean, uh, still to this day like I can't give you a reason why I stayed so yeah. long mm -hmm. you and you know? said to me like before we got on camera mm -hmm. that like you felt like the whole relationship was a heartbreak yeah so uh, for the the heartbreak part I felt like it was the entire relationship I didn't um it wasn't at the end where I broke it off or he broke it off it was when mm -hmm. I uh, was actually going through the motions of uh either the fighting or um, him trying to be controlling or uh, kind of even uh, pulled me away from my family and my friends. Um, and I was okay. I was not okay with it, but I let it happen. Um, so th that wasn't uh, a very uh, bright light in my moment <laughs> or in my, you know, in my years. But um, I, I'm looking back now, like, 
even when I was done with that relationship, like I, I didn't even feel the heartbreak anymore. I was just done. I was numbed to feeling that pain. And I finally realized my worth to where like, okay, I don't want this. I know I'm better than this. And there's going to be more for me in the future or, I, or in a relationship, a romantic relationship. You want somebody to treat you right, be at the same level as you treat you as their equal and grow together, like lift each other up. Don't put each other down. Like yeah. that just doesn't. And that's where anybody ultimately wants to get to, like in any relationship, whether they're ending it and they want to feel that way after or yeah. while they're in one. What about you, Javier? Oh, well, and, and, and I, I forgot, we didn't mention a really important fact, yeah. that the two of you are in a relationship, just yeah. disclo- full disclosure here, now. Yes. So yeah. that healthy relationship that you're in now is... Yeah, this is thing. everything that I want, and it makes me happy Aww. and feel fulfilled, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Oh, oh my God. very cute, <laughs> very cute. <laughs> This is a good example of uh, healthy relationships. We're very, we're talking about yes. past relationships. Yes. And, uh, I do too. Um. <laughs> you have a very interesting shirt there. Um, yeah. I, you know, I hope, I hope that is not your answer to a lot of the questions we'll be asking you today. Definitely not. Just shine on my friends. No comment. <laughs> no comment. That is it. Um, well, to add on to that, it's, uh, it's very interesting to see the woman's the woman's perspective on that because, as guys, we see it completely different. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're blinded at a young age to understanding the women that we're getting with. We hope to have a life with, um, and. Now, what do you what do you mean by that? You said you're blinded at a young age to understand the women. Yeah, it's it's in the sense of uh, you're not experiencing the same thing emotionally as we are. It's uh, it's very hard to be a it's it's a guy. You're you're growing up with guys. You're hanging out with guys, and unfortunately, social media shows you a lot, and it makes you think of a way of how to act with women. Um. But 80%, probably more of the women, are not what you see on social media. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, us guys uh, got to get heartbroken because of our m- mistakes uh, to where we lose a good one. Or, or maybe it's not even the good one, but it's the one that wasn't meant for you. So when you meet the one that's meant for you, prepare for it and you're not making that same mistake um just because i can't say i was in a relationship where it was toxic uh the relationship that i was in just didn't work out sitting here today is uh i recognize that maybe a lot of the, not a lot just the one main relationship didn't work out because of the way that i was Mm. Which a lot of guys could agree so to. So you're that. saying you're the one breaking the hearts is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's not breaking the hearts. It's uh it's not a it's not breaking the hearts. <laughs> it's sometimes we just don't know how to take care of the heart. Ah, ah. That's a really good way to say that. Because I think yeah. growing up and what contributes to having like a toxic relationship just in probably your first one or two that you have that a lot of people might have is you are two people that might not know how to healthily take care of each other's hearts. And I think women were like a little more emotionally um, in tune and a little more emotionally mature. So it's like a little easier for us. But like, like you said, like men have to like learn because when you're hanging out, like, you know, guys aren't as sensitive and not that women are sensitive, but it's like you're hanging out with other emotionally in tune people as a woman, but Mm -hmm. guys, you know, you guys don't operate like that, which is like perfectly fine because that's the yin and yang of the universe. So that's fine. But I think that's really interesting that you say that like as men, like you have to kind of learn, you gotta, you gotta learn from experience. 
it's mm-hmm. like an internship. <laughs> like, yeah. like women, you can kind of figure it out. Like it, uh, we say we still have to like get heartbroken to know what we want or whatever. Yeah. But I don't think that we have to get heartbroken to know how to take care of somebody's heart. I think we have to get heartbroken to know how we, we want. yeah, <laughs> what, what we want and yeah. how we want to be treated. Yeah. Because our instinct is to take care. Yeah. And I felt like I was constantly searching for like a validation in mm-hmm. that relationship. And, um, I'm hoping that, I mean, I still feel like that, time that we had together even though it was like not the best years of my life and I'm not proud of it but I still feel like I had to go through that to learn that lesson and uh sometimes it it takes longer for for others um but hopefully I can express that like as soon as you see some red flags if somebody is being you know controlling trying to tell you what to wear who to talk to who not to talk to and because they have insecurities and like, no, like, just stand up for what you want and what makes you happy. And if they have a problem with that, then, I mean, that's their own insecurities. And uh, I feel like we have a very, like, transparent um, relationship. I, we, don't, we haven't really gotten into depth with, because it's the past, you know, with yeah. our past relationships. We've gotten to snippets when it's the appropriate time to talk about it. But we're, we're not here, um, what's the word? to like live in the past yeah Yeah. but but like you said and I love that you said that you learn from the past you learned what to look for and you just talked about a few red flags and so I do want to just explore this concept of red flags just a little bit for you know from a man's perspective you know maybe you didn't experience heartbreak but did you ever come across red flags to where you're like oh okay I know if I see that that's probably not going to lead me down the road I want to be going down hmm all right, so with red flags, I guess, um, I guess it really depends on the environment you're in. Mm. Um, Tell me more. <laughs> for example, we're sitting here with three lovely women that respect themselves, and they're going to go out, and they're going to respect themselves. You meet these three women, and... Uh, you act a certain way because of the way that you see them acting themselves. Um, unfortunately, I think it has to take a certain type of age. You have to go through those ages to respect these type of women to where, you know, they're not going to go and cause a headache for you um, in the sense of Red flags for a lot of young dudes is, uh, you know, going out, um, how do I Yeah, say I it? heard cause a headache for you. I'm still on that part. I want to know <laughs> what that means. <laughs> so, for example, cause a headache is like, okay, if, if, uh, if your boyfriend goes out and then he's out with his boys, mm-hmm. but you know his friends, uh and you know some of their girlfriends, you're going to be more comfortable with him going out. Mm-hmm. Maybe be like, you know, I want you. Don't be out so late, but I feel comfortable with you. It's tr- trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're saying that women have to reach a certain age to be able to handle that? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm speaking from a guy's perspective. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. In the sense of like looking at women like, okay, so certain women go out. For example, if you three were to go out, I wouldn't be concerned. But if I'm a younger dude that doesn't understand how to respect it and how to see it, you can uh, have like that red flag. Got you. Because of the friends. Mm. Because the your the main prize might be great. And you know the main prize respects itself. But sometimes just how you see it with guys. No, that guy I don't trust him with my boyfriend. Mm. Sometimes you see that with girls, even though you see that your girl's a prize. And as a younger age, I think that's a problem. And I think a lot of dudes that maybe get to their older age that don't experience, like, talking about it or, like, getting to a solution, it continues. Mm. Um, But those are some of the red flags that I see. Like, guys just don't understand themselves and they project that onto women. You made me think of something 
because when we were talking about women being more emotionally mature and all those things, it made me think about the fact that I think that women just are talking about these things more. So they're working these things out with themselves, with others, and maybe more guy culture is not not talking about feelings. So it takes longer to sort those feelings out. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because um, nowadays you start to realize like, hey man, like we don't have to put that away. We can talk about it because we're all going through it. Right. Right. And for some reason back then it was taboo. Mm -hmm. But now it's just like, bro, I feel a certain way. So guys are talking more about their emotions. Guys are definitely talking more. At this age, you're saying, or were, when you were younger in high school, mm. were you talking I think about of, of the, the I think of the time. The time. The time. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So the you're time. saying like this generation. In 2024, for men. it's more socially for. acceptable for, for, men. for men to talk Sorry, about yeah. there. Yes. Which I think yes. is good. I think it's honestly now, you're right, because I think it's a red flag for like girls my age if a man can't talk about their feelings. It's mm-hmm. like, why can't you vocalize yeah. how you're feeling? Like that, that's a red flag. And you're, and, and, and you're the younger generation. So yeah. So I, I think just as a culture, it's just more of a thing now. Yeah. And it's shifted. And I understand like the going out, like if it takes a certain level of maturity to like, not just be like, Oh, my girlfriend's pretty. Mm -hmm. She's, I don't really try. I don't really want her going out like point blank period when it's like, Oh, well, who is she going out with? Like, I like her friends. They're cool they're not gonna let her do something dumb like they're not gonna make her look dumb like it's who it's a trust thing which you're right and and the bad part about guys is that we're so surface we're very surface we're very surface until you until we really love you Mm. that's when it's no longer surface like you can go out with because I trust well, So the ladies want to know, how do they know when a guy really loves them? I, I would say... Um, <laughs> you stopped him. <laughs> <laughs> what are some signs? It's, it's because it's, signs? It's, it's, not a, it's not a sign. It's more of a feeling. I was going to say, is it more of a feeling? More of a feeling. Okay. Yeah. It's more of a feeling. But a lot of women think that guys really love them who don't. So are they getting the wrong feelings? There's got to be cues and indicators that give them these feelings. That is true. That is yeah. true. Um, They'll give you the time. I think there are. I think if you really think about it, there's things that you start doing, whether you notice them or not, yeah, when you really, really love a woman. Yeah. Uh, and it's like there's things that people who have been heartbroken they like look back and they're like he never did this or that or that the third mm-hmm, for me yeah. like maybe he it might not even be that he didn't really love you he just didn't really love you that much yeah or you weren't a fit sometimes or you're just love. not a fit and sometimes you know, people get in love is in the love. difference yeah. than loving you, can you love somebody but it's true. not be in, in love, love. With them. you look like you got you you thought of something so um i would say it's like uh what an old coach told me it's consistency if you love someone and they're upset and you say something that you know is going to get them off their mind but they're just angry and the first time it doesn't work with it i think i would say for women is uh if a guy just gives it one try and it's mm. like what I would say that's kind of a sign because the guy that really cares for you is not going to be like, whatever. Yeah, he's it's going to be like, Bro, mm-hmm. no, we're going to figure this out so we can go to sleep mm. happy. Um, so I guess it, it would be consistency or trying. Oh, effort. Um, effort. 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 Mm-hmm. Effort, but mm. not effort the next day. Effort just following. Because mm. sometimes she might be upset with work. I have nothing to do with it. But at the end of the day, she's going to end up, we're going to end up in the same bed. So it's best for me to realize, like, what's going on? Like, we're good. Is everything at work good? We're good. Mm. I feel like certain guys, if they'll just let you go to sleep with that. 
They don't ask you. How are you doing? How like, have you been? Mm. We'll talk about it tomorrow morning. And I guess that would be the key point to this conversation. Talk yeah. about it tomorrow morning. Talk about mm. it. But you gotta talk about it now. If you don't get it done before your eyes get shut. It's just gonna carry on. Yeah. yeah. Because then you never know how he might feel about it or you might feel about it. Because then it, it leaves that question. Yeah. Well, so I think you're hinting on one of the reasons why I think, you know, some relationships may fail, whether we want them to or not. Communication. What are some other reasons you think relationships fail? Uh, I'm going to go back to transparency. I feel like the second that you start feeling like you need to hide things, even though there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with what you're doing or what you said to talk to, whatever, but the feel, like you feel like you can't say that you talked to this person or you said this or this happened in your day um, or delete text messages, even though they're not bad, um, th there's a problem with that because um, you're trying to protect them because you think that they're going to get upset with that or they have insecurities about certain things. So um, I think it, it's, it's really uh, relationships can fail because people aren't transparent with like, what they want uh, and who they are as a person. Um, so you just need to be transparent of who you are, what you want, what makes you happy. And if if you're not, if, if they think that that's not okay, then that then yeah. It's that makes sense because everybody, I think everybody says like, oh, communication. And even though it literally is so important, communication is important. Like communication paired with transparency yeah. is right. And you should be able to be transparent with your partner like they're your best friend. Yeah. And like that is what is important is that like even though you might have best friends, mm -hmm. like your partner should also be your best friend. And that is like where the trans, you, that's where you should feel comfortable being mm -hmm. transparent. Like, do yeah. you agree? Like, do you guys feel like you're best friends and like that yeah. and that the transparency <laughs> is easy? Yeah. Yes, I, uh, I totally agree with that. Um, one thing that I would add on to the communication, which is kind of just adding on to that, is uh, I think it's very important for people to realize that um, relationships and life are two different things. Um, whatever life gives you, don't bring it into the relationship. Talk about it in the relationship, but don't come in with that anger in the relationship. I think those are things that, are, unfortunately, you know, we just, we're living in that stage of life where work is so important, things are so important, and sometimes we bring that into the relationship. And I say that because I'm guilty of it. I worked a position where I was stressed out, and I would bring it on to her. And I realized, like, no, oh, this is not fair to her. I no longer work with that company. And now I see, like, oh. Complete like, change complete in his difference. attitude. Complete difference. Yeah. And I, I just think that maybe a lot of people, your relationship should be your safe zone. Your mm -hmm. safe zone. Like, you can be mad or something, but... You communicate, but without bringing that anger to the communication. So I guess that would be my. That's really important. And I think that that's really great that you said like safe zone and not bringing things into your relationships and like communicate. You can communicate all day. And like, I think people like they think like, oh, communication is important, especially with a partner, because you don't want to bring your issue your outside issues into your relationship and you want to be transparent and you want to do all of these things but communication is also like a big thing for all other types of relationships like you made it very clear that not even just romantic like don't take out your your personal things on the people in your life meaning like friends mm -hmm. your family do you guys have any like instances of either that happening and it ending in like a heartbreak with your family or your friend or just something happening with the family or friend that like caused you to have a heartbreak because those hurt too just yeah. as much just to add on to that um before we continue with the uh, adding on to what work brings on to you um the reason why i say that is because when you have someone that really cares for you and they 
and then that person brings something that is affecting that work, you, as the person that cares for them and loves for them, you want to fix it for them, but you can't. Hmm. So it's very, like, it gets on your mind. It's effective. So it's, um, so yeah, it's, it's not on the thing of it's just like, you're putting this on me. It's more of like, how can I fix this for you? Mm-hmm. And it's bothering me that I can't fix it for you. And as we're transitioning, you guys are making me think of something because we talked about red flags and things to look for and lessons learned. And I think that what I'm hearing is it's not always just that there's a flaw in that person or that they don't really care about you. There are just real genuine things that people who actually do care about each other can break and tear the relationship apart, right? Even though like there are two people who I think could be in love but they still end up breaking each other's hearts because there are certain things in the relationship that are happening or not happening. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I think it honestly starts with yourself. So whether if you're going through a heartbreak with a, a losing someone in your life, whether it's a relationship, a romantic relationship, friendship, uh, or changing jobs, any, anything that you're losing and taking out of your life, you need to like always take a step back and ask yourself like, is this making me happy? Is this like feeding my mind, soul and body? Like what if, if it's not, then like, what are you doing? You know? Mm -hmm. And I know we always have like our daily battles of, uh, bad habits or whatever. Um, but I mean, you just, you want to make sure, um, on the regular that whatever it is that you're doing or working towards is, is Mm -hmm. making you happy, feeding your soul, feeding your brain. Um, so I think that's where you kind of need to, to, to start. So, I mean, it's kind of like your foundation. And I mean, I know a job can just be a job, but like the beautiful thing about NCRF to like bring up (laughs) and chime in (laughs) is that like it, they really do show like all the different things that you can do. It's like, I mean, growing up in school, I felt like, Oh, you'd be a fireman. You'd be a lawyer. You'd be police. Like, yes, those are all like cool, great jobs, but like going introduced into the steam like you could work with stem cells and you could work with um the uh what is it called with the copying the photo not the uh the printing 3d printing yeah um there's so many different things that you can do and then i remember like going to the events like thinking oh my gosh like i wish i went to these events because you know now i i would be doing something that's super interesting super cool and i'd be happy doing it yeah. um and working with ncrf i was able to uh help with the expos and everything and that's when I realized like oh my gosh I want to do events <laughs> and here I am now like the food and beverage manager for Wolfgang Puck Catering and I'm so happy like doing what I do and um I really feel like doing what you do for work is also like it's uh setting the standard for yourself like with what makes you happy on a mm-hmm. day to daily basis because you have to do it every day yeah. you have to wake up and you have to do it so like if you're doing something that's not really making you happy, like that could bleed into your other relationships that you're having, whether if it's your friendships or with your family or your romantic relationships, and you're just going to take it out on them. You need, yes, there's going to be stress. Like I I stress with work, but I feel like it's a healthy amount of stress, you know, nothing like too crazy. And then what, I don't know, whatever anxiety I have, I talk it out with him and then he helps like calm me down uh, about it. But I mean, it's nothing crazy. So I love doing what I do and I can only imagine, I mean, I have been there like in a place having a job and not being happy where I'm at. I'd come home like crying and stressed out mm-hmm. and like I just felt like it wasn't worth it anymore. Like it, I w- it was still, it still like fulfilled me and like it fed my soul. Like I was happy doing it. But then I was also trying to like juggle school and I felt like it wasn't, something had to give. And so I needed to move on mm-hmm. from that, cut the ties and uh move on forward and like knowing my worth and and continue growing um so yeah so really so just being being happy within yourself helps you to be happy no matter what the relationship is yeah like i feel like what you do on a daily basis is gonna like continue feeding your soul and for sure um, with with the growth with the other relationships that you have with people for sure, and I know the Kobe Bear is trying to transition us to those other relationships. So let's back let's to let's the, sorry, let's transition. Let's transition. <laughs> so has anyone Tell ever me. broke up with a friend? And then 
Even like worse, has anyone ever broken up with a best friend? I know that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell uh, us it's, about it's it. It's somewhat kind of recent too, and uh, uh, best friend, loyal, very loyal friend, um, but it, it became toxic because there was drama within the friend group. Like they mm. just uh, they just bought a house together, and um, things went wrong. I was trying to be the um, peacemaker and the mediator and never trying to like, you know mend things. <laughs> It never works out being the peacemaker. Is that what you're saying? I try. I mean, I think sometimes you're always gonna look bad on one side or the other. Yeah, but that's on them if that's how they feel. But I mean, I came in with good intentions. If you love them both, you know what what do you do? I felt like I was in the middle. I was in the middle. So that's what I think. If if you love them both and they're going, and they're having an issue between themselves. It's unfortunate. It it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's <laughs> unfortunate because if you jump in in between and you try to be 50-50, someone's always going to feel that there's a 45-50. So what do you recommend in that situation? I think what uh, what I recommend is just uh, now that we have text, uh, just send out a group chat between two people that are at, arguing, and then you just lay it out clear. So is that not mediating? What's the difference? That's, that's mediating, but w- when someone responds for uh, advice, if you're friends with both, so I think you're just best being hearing. like, hey, you know what? I think it's best if you both talk about it. This is my opinion mm-hmm. for you both. And then from there, you guys go. So Be- you're saying have the group conversation and then let them go. Let them know how you feel about both of them. Okay. Let them know that, hey, if you, I love both of you, you two arguing is going to affect me. I don't want you guys to argue. I want you two to figure this out. But I'm going to step away from this Mm. because I don't want anybody to think I'm on one side more than on the other side. But I love you both. So, like, along those lines, I said that to them, but separately during different times, I'd hang out with one friend one day and then the next the other, and I'm hearing them just like, yeah, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, oh my gosh, and I would tell them like, maybe you shouldn't have done this, or really, is it that bad? Like, I was trying to like make sense, make it make sense to them, like question right. uh, if what they were doing, if it was if they were taking the right actions, um, and really at the end of the day it does it it is their issue but I just felt like I was stuck in the middle and I was trying to like help the situation and really like it was being detrimental to my mental health no I've I've been there so I get you (laughs) no because it's like you sit there and you're like hearing your friend talk about your friend and you're like trying to be like well that's wrong that's right yeah that's right. you're right they're wrong and, they're and they they're right want you're you wrong to take their side exactly. but you're like trying not to and then all you it just makes you kind of resent both of them at some point mm. because you're like mm. you're hearing like yeah. bad news about each other somebody else those. that you love and care about. right exactly it's you like know, a lot my, you know what sucks sorry what? you know what sucks the most is that when you hear both sides you start realizing like you both are arguing over no Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I didn't have to. Get it's a to lot that of that. Extent. It's yeah. a lot of that, which is like sometimes you need someone in the middle to be like, "I yeah, love you both." I was trying to like Just shake them. Like, it's not that so I'm so, so did sorry. One of the friendships have to end. Did both um, of them end? You know, no. Um, so like, it ended up being to the point of when I'd have a conversation with one of the friends. And I would be, I feel like it's being a good friend when you're being honest with them, saying like, hey, I think you were kind of in the wrong on doing that. You don't need to. Yeah. They were being a little petty with the yeah. certain things that they were doing. And like, you don't need to mm-hmm. make it that difficult or complicated. And then she would start yelling at me and get right. upset with That's me. That's the hard part yes. is that so, if you try to be honest, but they're defensive. Yeah. She didn't want to have anything to hear or about didn't want to listen to anything that I'd have to say. I have a question. I have a question. Obviously, it's three women. And I see you talking about this as a guy's perspective. It's more of a step out of this. Mm. My question is, do you think due to the experiences you've had with this situation, do you think as women it's best to just step out of it or still continue to like 
I think it's it, hard. Fix it. I think it's hard because to I step out. I feel like of it. a lot of us men, we're just like, you know what? If you guys can't fix it, I'm not gonna step in and try to fix it between both. But I feel like with women, they try to fix it for both of them. And then I feel like then there's that one side picks other. I think it's hard to step out of it for the sense that like when you meet up with your girlfriends, it's like they're updating you about their life. And if that's one of the updates and that's like the biggest thing that's happening in their life, you're going to hear about it regardless if you step out or not. So it's like when somebody's like spewing this information that you probably don't want at this point if you're trying to step out. If they're spewing this information at you, it's hard not to be like, well, it's hard not to give your opinion as their, as their friend because as a friend, you want to be honest and you want to yeah. like give advice. So it's like hard to just kind of cold turkey be like, I'm not in this mess because you can try, but they're going to bring you back in it. So it's and I like think that's the difference between men and women is that our conversations are filled with updates about and all details. those things. The guys say. are probably going to mention it once and never mention it again. So yeah. it's easier to step out of it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so cool. Fair enough. When that I'd have fair. these conversations and she would get upset with me uh, by me trying to like not taking the other one's side, but right. saying like, hey, like I think you were kind of in the wrong for right. doing or saying that, she'd get upset. And then the next phone call, I just would stay silent. I was just being a listening mm -hmm. ear for her because I'm like, okay, well, she didn't like what I had to say, so right. now I'm just going to be there for her. Right. Um, and then she was getting mad because I didn't have and anything to say. And then that's not good enough either, right? Like, okay, I'm, so like, that, that I'm so sorry that I'm so sorry that yeah. I'm so sorry that you being the middleman ended yeah. up in you being it you really ending ugly. like in a friendship breakup. Yeah. A friendship breakup is like the hardest. Yes. Yeah, I had to send her a long loving text. I felt like I was being mature about her, like, hey, girl, like I love you. I love her as well but like I can't do this anymore like I'm trying to be there for you but you don't want to have to hear anything I have to say and I feel like I can't do anything right that I'm doing or not doing I'm trying to be there for you but um during this time like I think it's best like we just like keep our space until you know like things settle down she went off she didn't like that I said that thought I wasn't being there for her and um and we are no longer friends. Um, I think we both miss each other because she she was like she was a loyal friend, mm -hmm. but I feel like the loyalty got a little blind. With yeah. I feel like uh, when you're being a good friend, you need to be honest with them. Say that like, yes. hey girl, like kind of we're in the wrong for doing or saying that. Um, and then every time I'd vent to her about something, she'd be like, oh, um, screw them, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. you know. But like maybe I needed to hear like yo maybe you yeah. did something a little wrong you could have done it this yeah. way or said it this way yeah. so she wasn't um she was loyal but um i think a good friend you need to be honest with somebody and tell them yeah. when they're in the wrong or the right and i know? think that's why a lot of maybe it's just women i don't know you can chime in if, <laughs> if it's men too but i think that might be why a lot of female friendships might end and it's like the worst heartbreak because Stop it's it. like yeah. because it's like stupid it's like not it's like I'm sitting here and just trying to some of us think because I'm the same way like my honesty is me being a good friend to you. Like yeah. I'm going to be loyal to you, but like I'm going to call you out because I want you to be a better person at the end of the day. And I don't, I don't want you to just be about it. You know, right. I was like being very nice about it. Other people are like, you yeah, don't even, like not, not everybody is ready to receive that type of feedback about themselves. Yeah. Um, and not everybody is is ready to look at themselves. Right. Yeah. It, it, like really look at themselves. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people feel like they need to just hear that they're in the right, whether they're in the right or not. And that I'm not saying that that's what you should do by any means, but just thinking, you know, why it may not be received. You know, yeah. not everybody is yeah. in a place where they're ready to receive that. And exactly. that's like why I feel like a lot of friendships like yeah they either like they go ghost or you have a literal friendship breakup because it's like you have to save your you don't want to compromise your values mm -hmm. that's what i was to, gonna get to values that's the key word values like sorry go ahead <laughs> before we get on to that values so there's certain things that women don't want to talk about values get themselves in a perspective with guys she said chime in guys that value it's just it's not it's not value of uh ultimate value but it's just the 
society that I'm in. Where we don't open up how you women open up. Like, we talk about something like, yo, like, this happened to me. All right, cool. We'll talk about it for five minutes, and then we'll be on about it. Mm -hmm. Because we'll be like, get over it. Right. I feel like some guys' relationships last a little longer because Mm -hmm. we don't look into it. But at the end of the day, it's not healthy. Because it doesn't make sense. And And some women break up friendships. Because, because so you're it. saying which is which is worse, <laughs> so you know? Long, long, so it's just like I, yeah. I think it's just it has to come to that time where like it just balances out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, none of them is healthy. Yeah. How me and my friends act with each other, I should check in on my friends more. They should check in on me more, because I know how I feel. I know how they feel. We don't do that, women. They do that. Sometimes, like you said, a little too much. And sometimes you feel like they're overstepping boundaries. So I think in that sense, it's just like, I guess this conversation is good for that because it it just shows both perspectives. Yeah. Because I feel like men don't have like friendship breakups. I'm not saying all men don't, but I feel like it's It's less common. It's very rare. And maybe, so, and we can, maybe we can learn a little bit from their end too. Maybe being a little bit more hands off with certain things but but where i don't know where's the middle ground i think i think that i you know what because i'm i'm also trying to find this balance for myself so this is my (laughs) we're all searching because (laughs) if you got the formula get let us in because i i'm more i am more like a guy in the sense that like i don't overshare Mm -hmm. i'm like i'm gonna tell you something if i think you need to know like i'm not a just like i'm not a sharer it's not about things in my life because I like to deal with things on my own, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I know like it is nice sometimes when I do lean on my friends. Mm-hmm. So I think that things that you, I think it's as women, we need to think about the things that we want to work out and can kind of work out by ourselves mm-hmm. yeah. or, you know, you don't have to consult everything. Yeah. I feel like I need to talk about everything, right. whether it's right. him my girlfriend, my mom, like I'm right. an over sharer. And, 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 and let me ask you, do you feel like you know what your true authentic voice sounds like through all of that, you know, or are your decisions just often made up of the opinions of others? Yeah. Right. I definitely think it's my own and I just, but I just need to say it to somebody. Yeah. And, and, some, know, people like yeah. Yeah. You know, and some, some, some people are like that. Some people are like that. Validation and or... some people need the advice. And mm-hmm. it's like, I think that as women, we need to kind of identify the type of person that we are. Cause I have, yeah. a, I have friends that are like, I just need to say it. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, like I, yeah. I'm, I'm a good ear to listen okay. because I don't share. So I'm like, <laughs> I'll listen to you all day, whatever. <laughs> um, or half listen or whatever, like whatever you need. <laughs> but I zone out. It's fine. <laughs> they know. But sometimes it's like you need to share share something to just get it out emotionally. Right. And right. And but sometimes you need you need to have the skill set to like work out navigate something. On your own. Yes, navigate mm-hmm. on your own. And I think that people need to know their friends and kind of understand how they work, especially when it comes to sharing. Because I think as women, that is our downfall in friendships is like the the definition of loyalty and our definition of sharing. Because mm-hmm. also like people overshare with their girlfriends about their relationship, and then they wonder why their best friends like hate their man. And it's like, well, you tell them every mm-hmm. about every fight you guys have. When it's like that's you, the both of you guys' yeah, relationship. And when like you're in some a better of it, place, they're, 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 they still have that. They still have that negative perception. So right. They, they, so they, it doesn't matter. Really for them to mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. matter. So it's like that's just that's just one thing. Or even even with your family, like you know, people. There's like a meme online where people are like, oh, well, my best friend's telling me about her grandma, and now I got beef with some 80 year old lady. <laughs> And it's, I've seen like memes like that and I'm like oh, that, yeah. but that, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's, that's just how we are, you know, but yeah. like, sometimes you don't have to do that because it's like, yeah. you have to think about the longevity of like, you know, like maybe your friend may not meet your 80 year old grandma that much. So it's okay. But yeah. you know, just that premise. Yeah. Yeah. And in general, I feel like an ongoing battle with myself is that, um, I lean on my people 
uh, family, friends, boyfriend to um, not help take off the stress, but just to, um, I don't know, feel better when I'm feeling like lonely or sad or stressed, whatever it is. Like I go to them for my comfort, which isn't a bad thing, but I need to be okay with myself. I need to be mm-hmm. confident and happy sitting in the room on my own, which I, I think I, I can be, but like I always lean mm-hmm. to like the easy, like comfort zone, you know? Yeah. So I got to be able to figure out things on my own sometimes. To, sorry, to add mm-hmm. on to that, it's, uh, I think at this age group, um, just being friends is not enough. Um, being a friend and n- knowing your friend and then seeing how their family is with them you got to, at this age, I feel like we got to start understanding how they grew up. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we mess up relationships because we try to force our open family conversation so with so certain one. people that don't come from an open conversation. Mm-hmm. They don't know any better. And we want to we wanna step over lines. Yeah. You have to meet people where they are. Yes. Sure. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us, I mean, it's a learning process. Yeah, it's a learning process because some of us come from families where your mom or dad will ask you, "Hey, how are you doing today?" How, explain to me how you feel. And then there's some families that don't offer that to each other. Mm-hmm. And as friends, we want to step over those boundaries, and sometimes we're just like, "Bro, I want to know this because I care for you," but then that person doesn't feel comfortable because they didn't grow up like that. And I think understanding that it's very important. Yeah, thank you. Being friends. For sure. Thank you for that. So, you know, (laughs) you talked about a lot about it all comes back to you, it all comes back to yourself. And so that kind of brings us into our our final like category of the night is how heartbreak impacts your identity, your self perception, your Mm -hmm. self esteem. You know, what impact does that have on you and how you enter future relationships? Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's 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 talk about it. Well, um, I don't know if I'm a, a special case, but I'm sure there's others out there. But uh, when experiencing heartbreak and experiencing it again, I I wear my heart on my sleeve. So like, no matter what happened in the past, I'm not gonna treat the next person as if like they're the last person, and you know, have mm-hmm. my guard up. Like I have my. But guard that's down. not easy. It it well I don't know it comes naturally to it comes me because I you want it I want okay, well, I then. want special relationship yeah. I want the authenticity like okay. I want to be vulnerable so they can feel the same mm-hmm. way and know that it's real if it is something that's real mm-hmm. um, so uh, I know it's not ho- it's not easy for some people yeah. to do but for some reason it comes natural to me um, and I think it is kind of a blessing because. Um, not a lot of people can do that. They're going to like carry their baggage from their toxic relationships they had before and they're going to treat yeah. treat them as if like they did something to them when really they did nothing to yeah. me, like but treat me well. So yeah. like you need to give everyone an equal opportunity who's coming your way if they're treating you uh, with respect. Mm-hmm. I think with heartbreak, um, I'll speak from a guy's perspective. Um, He's representing today, you guys. He's holding down the board. <laughs> representing well. Just in the sense of, like, um, obviously, women mature a lot faster than men. And men's intentions may be good, but we just don't know how to show it. For example, um, if I didn't mess up in my previous relationship, I wouldn't be ready for her. Mm. I had to mess up to understand how to treat a woman because I got my heart broken from not understanding how to treat a woman. Mm. And I realized, like, oh, damn, like, that could have been, but now I'm where I'm supposed to be because now I know how to treat her and I love her. And speaking for the guys, it's, uh, Sometimes we love, but it's unfortunate that we don't know how to show it mm. to where you get it. Yeah. 
Um, oh, that sounds heartbreaking to me. <laughs> I'm like thinking, it like, is. that's so sad. It is heartbreaking. And you can lose people that way. And yeah, because right. they're not but being loved they, in the way they need to but, be. But, but that's, he's, that, that's what he's saying. That heartbreak brings you to this. Yeah. Like us guys, we got to break our own hearts sometimes. Wow. To show us what our heart really values. Hmm. That's a gem. Uh, that was that was a gem. Learned. That's I feel a like gem. I need to snap. But don't forget. Like you need to not forget because know your red flags when you see it, and the second you see that, you know, question it and um, either move on or talk about it and try to improve from that. Um, yeah. So you can, you know, keep growing as a person or whatever relationship you're having with the person. This is so fun to see how different it like it. The perception of like heartbreak and what we learn as a species is like so different. Like mm-hmm. him being like, I needed to get my heart broken to know how to treat somebody okay. and know how to love them properly. And she's like, I had to get my heart broken to know what I needed and mm-hmm. what I need from for me, what I what I want. Yeah. To Which know is, the signals to show somebody how to treat me. Right. Mm-hmm. it's like it's so interesting which is why it works like this is yin and yang like yeah. I, i'm so like a yeah. I'm, I'm such like, i'm loving it i'm, I'm such that. a like universal like balance mm-hmm. elemental type person whatever whatever one well, person Everybody. has to get broken by another and the other person has to get broken by themselves mm. interesting unite. it's very interesting okay so really quickly a few tips if you have any for Mending your broken hearts. Yes, very important. Is this my camera? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was yours. I think so. All right. So I will say this. Guys, understand women. If they're mad, they're mad. That's fine. <laughs> that is fine. If you really care about her, you find out why she's mad. Do not give up on it. Care for it. Because uh, more than likely, you're going to need that. And if you don't show that, you're not going to get it. Just care for them, bro. Like, just, at the, I, it's, it's so simple for me to say it. I love how simple it is for you to say. But say it again <laughs> and it again just, and again. But men are simple. Maybe they're going to get it. It's so <laughs> simple. It's very simple. Like, us guys, we're so simple. We're, we're very, very simple. <laughs> but I guess it's so hard for us sometimes to understand the simpleness that we don't know how to give it. Because women will show you that they love you. But sometimes, ah, it's not the love that I want. It's the love that I need, though. But it's not the love that mm. I want. And that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, just, okay. Okay. just you, be nice. Okay. You got some tips? Uh, know your worth. Do what makes you happy. And it's all about communication, transparency. Um, and the relationships that you have. Um, if it doesn't serve you any purpose then maybe you should question if you need to like cut those ties um and and move forward so you can continue growing i'm going to say the unpopular thing okay say it if you get broken up with and you're heartbroken sometimes revenge is your friend okay (laughs) this is and not and not to be no no no, not to be vengeful don't be vengeful towards the person okay okay. but revenge as in level yourself up Mm. you are once you start leveling yourself up you're gonna forget in the first place why you started it and then you're gonna be like wait it was that heartbreak and now they're sad and just the thought of knowing that that person is probably a little like dang is enough to make you move on. I am just going to tell you. There's health, there's a, there's other healthy ways, but le- but I I got to keep I'm the keep it real girl. Okay? No, I understand. <laughs> I, so now when you said it, I understand that. And and you're right. Like living my best life, being my best self, that makes me Like, like you're going to be so like, who, who was that? Right. Why, why did why was that? No, literally, you're like, going to be so busy living your best life and creating <laughs> the life that you want for yourself yeah. that you are going to forget that that person broke your heart. You're going to be like, "Who are they?" <laughs> I yeah. forget. Yeah. I forget my ex's yeah. names, girl. I really so dropped, I thought you were gonna drop the Tupac quote. Oh, <laughs> I won't say because you know I'm proper, but <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. No, that's a great one, and I'm just I'm with I'm with Roxanne because I I am one of those people. I'm a know yourself type of person. I am a enter a relationship 
whole type of person. Spend some time time with yourself. Find the joy in yourself. Find the happiness in yourself so that somebody is not responsible for your happiness. And yes. You can't put your happiness in somebody else's hands because then, then they can take it away. Yeah. And that's a really vulnerable place to be in, but it's not a healthy place to be in. No. Like someone can add to your happiness, but no one should ever be able to steal your joy. So... Um, on that note, that kind of was our little round table, but at the end of this, we do do a round table. I asked you guys a specific question, but if you do have any final thoughts for the people out there in, in terms of heartbreak, if you've said everything you have to say, that's fine too, but let's final thoughts, I like tips, advice. Something and I think it went away. Um, I'm so sorry. Final thought, be nice to each other. Be yes. Good to each other. <laughs> be, be nice. You never know what that other person is going through. Just That's be nice. Very true. That that comes from a guy to other guys and to women. Be nice to each other. Um, kill it with kindness and you know live your best life. Like that is a silent a silent revenge. You know it's not like you're like harassing mm-hmm. them or rubbing it yeah. in their face. Don't be anything. slashing people's tires. Don't be doing yeah. that. <laughs> None of that. And then they're gonna say, "Call me, Ray. Tell me to do it." Um. <laughs> Yeah. That's DM me if you need <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you yeah. talk to her, your feelings might get hurt and your tires might get popped. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. We've got all types of subliminals. Well, you didn't point to your shirt today. So, thankfully. Yeah, you gave us a lot of comments. So, we appreciate that. And um, and what you got over there? It says, don't talk to me. I'll hurt your feelings. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't hurt anybody's feelings today. But for all the girls that got heartbroken and you leveled up after your ex, I hope their ex- your ex's feelings are hurt. <laughs> all right Word. hopefully you gained a little insight today that can help you with the heartbreak you're going through or your next heartbreak unfortunately sometimes it has to happen more than once um but until then thank you for joining us we always like to hear from you please leave comments below with any other topics you'd like us to discuss and what's on your mind until then this is life lessons on ncrf tv we out <laughs>